uh, I'm happy to be here today uh, with you and talk about like uh, uh, plant food. Uh, last time when we had um, uh, with me, we were talking about you know you can food, you know how it's affecting our life. But this time when we are talking about is uh, uh, plant food is very important what we eat and how it affects on our body and um, when we talk about like plant food or plant-based whole food plant-based the question is like why we should eat it and what's the problem with the other food groups like for example the the meat or the dairy why is it uh, not good for for us or why how is effect on our body i would like to share um my screen with you my presentation Can you see it? Everyone can see it. Perfect. Okay, great. It's um, the plant food. When we talk about uh, plant food, we have um, we have you know different type of diets. We always hear about like try this one or try this one, but we are not talking about lifestyle. We are talking about diets. It means it's always a temporary something what can um, affect on our uh, life or if you want to lose weight or we have any problems, allergies. It's always, you know, how, um, when we eat something, how it affects on us. And when we stop this diet, if we don't change it to a lifestyle, we always get, get go back to the same you know, what we had problem before. I can list for a uh, few diets. You can see the Mediterranean, intermittent, vegan, low carb, Atkins, Dukan, military diet, a lot of diet, but they are diet, what the people just keep it for a while till their health issues uh, stable or they can get better. But why is it important to have a lifestyle what can give us a, a happy life, a satisfied life? Um, I would like to introduce a gentleman, I, I'm sure many of you know about him, uh, Dr. T. Colin Campbell. He's the founder of the China study, who was in China for years to study what's the secret of the China, Chinese people. And he has the center of the nutrition studies where I got my certificate from uh, two years ago. And um, he can prove why the plant food uh, can heal and can help our, our, our life and it can be a lifestyle and when we talk about like food there is always the question what to eat what to avoid and and why it's always the question like why it's better and why is the other not working a 2017 study uh, published the um, that college in Korean analyzed the three different types of diet with certain people. They had three groups. One group had reduced uh, animal food intake, dairy, egg, fish, and meat. And then the group, uh, second group was plant-based diet, including whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and legumes. And group three was unhealthy diet with packet, packed juices, canned fruit, refined grain like white rice, white pasta and other similar products. And the result was um, unsurprising. They found the second group was the healthiest, the eaters, to be, have the best heart condition overall. And they were also leaner at head and had more energy than other groups. And when we are talking about the food groups, we can talk about today the meat, the dairy, and why it's important to understand when, when we had uh, these uh, groups in our life and we feel changes in our life in a bad way it's something wrong when we have for example digestive issues when we have skin problems or when we have weight problems it means something in our body doesn't work as it should and we need to find out what and when we learn learn about like the food groups and when we start to learn like what food groups are good for us it helps our life you know to, for the changes when we talk about the first group was the meat when uh, the effect of the meat industry on human health increased risk of diseases high meat consumption increases saturated fatty acid in the body 
leading to high cholesterol levels, which is associated with heart disease, obesity, diabetes, digestive diseases, certain cancers. And when we talk about like the antibiotics or the other, um, what they, how they treat you know, the animal to get more meat, for example, the animal drugs and uh, in the meat can enter the human body through consumption and causes infections, diseases, allergic reactions, gastrointestinal problems, toxic effects on the cardiovascular system and gene mutation as well. And that's why it's important to see, for example, the meat industry, how they, they for example, they don't treat the chicken to grow. They want the chicken to grow faster and that's the, the fact how they make it more, more money, more meat out. And that's why they use the injections. They said, even when we, you, we cook, cook the meat, when we process the meat, unfortunately, the antibiotics and all the drugs are they are still in the cells and its effect on our, our body, especially the human body. For example, the harmful substance in the processed meat, the red meat may contain chemicals such as hame, nitrites and polycyclic and heterocyclic amines, which can cause all cell damage and in the colon and rectum leading to colorectal cancer. And it was proved by the, uh, Dr. Colin Campbell. He continued many years of the research looking at the mechanism of, to explain the effect of animal protein and whether the, uh, drug intervention was the answer. He, conclu he concluded there was no one mechanism that caused cancer and therefore it wasn't possible for a drug to counter what happens on a high animal protein diet. Many studies from other researchers concluded that all types of animal protein, including low fat milk and saturated fat, cause an increase in cancer and coronary heart disease. Dr. Campbell describes in detail in this workshop, it was a program for, them, for the doctors, how animal protein increase cancer promotion mechanism while it's decreasing the way our body to tries to protect us during the three stages of, of cancer, imitation, promotion, and progression. I think it's, it's um, very important to see when we consume these meat, for example, any, any meat when we, when we cook it or how they farm them, how they, uh, they have the antibiotics, how they, when they have, maybe I will talk about the dairy as well, to see how it's effect on our health. The, the meat industry, their, their goal is to sell more meat and get the new one. And, um, it, it, and there is no mention about like, you know, or how it affects on our life. It's, it's, a, it's a meat industry, it's a meat business. When we talk about the other group, how it affects on our life is the dairy. Um, the first thing is like the animal milk for their little ones or ours. It's always the question like, should we drink uh, um, milk because of the calcium or how it affects, how it's good for us, even from the, the bottle milk from the babies, it's from the cow's milk. Uh, milk has always been a part of our diet from ancient times. However, some recent studies have raised the question over the consumption of animal milk by humans. Animal milk is for their offspring, not ours. As you see, as you read it, like the human, human milk has a different confusion than the cow's milk or the goat milk or the other mammal's milk. Cow's milk is made for the calves, unique growth and development needs while the human milk is made for their baby's development and growth. For example, the human babies need to develop their brain and nerve quickly, so the human milk is rich in fat and less in protein. The other, the calves need to develop their muscles quickly and then hence cow's milk has more protein than human milk. The other side of the, the animal milk can cause lactose intolerance. Many people have lactose intolerance because the milk contains sugar, as it's known, uh, lactose. The human, as infants, produce an enzyme called lactase, which enables the digestion of the lactose in the breast milk. Once we eat off the breast milk, lactase production stops. When we start consuming animal milk, digesting lactose-laden milk becomes difficult. Additionally, the pasteurization and the homogenization of animal milk 
Then I told that protein making is harder to digest. Difficult with daily digestion can create a terrible imbalance in the body as result in nausea, cramps, ga gas, bloating. And if you have these symptoms, they say like you don't have light of allergy because you are not a cow. You shouldn't eat, you shouldn't drink the, uh, the cow's milk. And the cow's milk can lead to milk allergies. For example, young children or infants using animal milk can develop allergic reaction to milk proteins. Milk mainly consists of two, two proteins, casein and the whey. Uh, cow's milk then 20 times more casein than human milk which puts a huge pressure on human digestion. That's why somebody can't digest, for example, the casein or, or the whey. When you buy something and you can see the, the ingredients, when you say the whey, it's a milk protein. That's how they use, that's why it's not vegan, because the, when you say, read it's whey, it's, it's from milk, it's, the, it's one of the protein. And the cow's milk uh, protein allergy is the most common food allergy in babies younger than one year of age. I have uh, friends, and for example, in my family, they had uh, allergy because they said even in the breast milk, the casein is there because our body can digest it. And that's why they find the animal casein in the, the mother breastfeeding. I think it's a very, very, um, a serious point because that that's where we can see what we can digest it just go through us but we our body can digest it the daily farming is cruel and ethical animals that are raised for their milk are repeatedly immigrated their babies are taken away to collect milk from them when they are exhausted and can no longer provide enough milk they are sent from slaughtering the key here is when they separate from the, the calf, they start to generate a hormone, stress hormone. And the problem is the stress hormone stays in the milk. And when we drink a milk, we drink a stress hormone in the milk. If they can even the pasteur, the pasteurization, the hormone stays in the, uh, in the milk. Additionally, these animals are injected with various hormones such as RBG hay, a genetically engineered bovine grown hormone to increase milk production. These synthetic hormones are harmful for the animal and also have been linked to many cancers. As you see, they inject them to generate more milk, increase the more milk production. The cows generally, they should live 10 years if they are not for the, in the milk um, industry. But in the milk industry, maximum five or seven, uh, maximum five or six years their life because they simply burn out. They are exhausted because of the non-stop milking, and that's why they generate uh, hormones in the in the in the body. It goes to the milk, and we drink the the hormone with the milk. There was a we were reading about the casein. Casein is one of the milk protein with, uh, beside the, the whey. The milk pro uh, protein can make an addictive response in our body. It can cause addictive response. There is Nicole Avena. She's an uh, assistant professor in pharmacy and system therapist. And the new research argues that the cheese is addictive in a way similar to drugs because of the chemical called casein, which is found in dairy products and can trigger the brain opiate receptors. It means when you, for example, if you see there, addicted to cheese, it exists because it's, it affects on the receptors in the brain. The response to the cows, cows farmings has been compared to heroin in terms of their ability to cause addiction. That's why many people say, I can't give up cheese, I can't give up cheese, because that's the reaction in the brain how the casein affects uh, in our brain. It puts, it puts strain on the digestive system because the casein breaks down so slowly, it places a great deal of strain on the digestive system. Why many people think that negative, negative reaction to dairy products is due to lactose intolerance, it's very likely that it might actually be the casein. The digestion difficulties could be from your gut 
lacking the enzyme necessary to digest this type of protein. The other, it can cause respiratory issues uh, caused in use that make the strong type of glue for wooding. Did you know? I never heard it before when I was preparing that um, presentation. I was searching for a bit deeper and deeper to the milk and the DA product. And after I find this, like the casein, they used it for glue. They made glue from it. They add apple cider vinegar and they add another acid and they rest, uh, left the milk rest and after they pressured like the tofu, when they are pressing the tofu, and after they had a water resistant glue from the casein, what is a milk protein? Because if uh, thick and coarse properties, woodworkers used it for uh, strength and long lasting effects. Unfortunately for us, it is a great at forming mucus. Many people has asthmatic reaction when they consume milk. And when they stop consume milk, this reaction stops and after a, a few uh, certain time later, it stops. There is a professor and his wife had asthma for very serious asthmatic uh, shocks, attacks. She couldn't leave the house without the spray. And after when they heard about the plant-based eating, she stopped uh, eating any animal products, especially the dairy. And she had very serious uh, asthmatic, asthmatic shocks and asthma, but it took six months to cleanse her bloody, uh, body out. And now she is asthma free. She doesn't have to use any, any spray or anything. She's free of asthma because the casein caused this problem for her. The, the human system can become clogged due to this protein. If you are noticing any, any symptoms like runny nose or itchy eyes, that could be from the casein. But um, it's very important to test when we have a, these kind of symptoms to stop just one uh, product at a time, I mean one group, and after see the reaction of the body. Because I was talking about the casein glue, I was searching for it like what, like we drink it in the milk, but they can make a glue from it. The casein glue is a type of a chip made from milk protein. The glue is known to be very strong over a long period of time and it's resistant to water. It has a longer drying time. There have been many uses for casein glue throughout history. There are records that show, that show it was created and used by the ancient Egyptians. It was employed in the Middle Ages to bind together these panels into thicker plates on which artists could paint. It also believed to be used by makers for famous musical instruments that have last, lasted for the century or more. It was used extensively in work wooding, uh, woodworking, furniture making, and even to assemble early wooden aircraft. Just imagine what is in the milk, the protein, we consume it, but our body can digest, but it's perfect for uh, assemble early wooden aircraft or just to use it to play. They are using it for China, you know, making and even for instruments. It's just like, wow, when I read about it and I said, okay, I didn't know that. But it's something new because we know like what we consume and how it can uh, affect on our body. It can include the same reaction as a gluten intolerance. It was something new for me when I read it because uh, the gluten intolerance is many uh, it's it comes with autistic people and autistic people they have gluten intolerance and they find out that the casein is very similar in structure to gluten and oftentimes can cause adverse cross reaction in people suffering from gluten intolerance studies have shown that about 50 percent of gluten sensitive patients have a sensitivity to casein as well if your symptoms have not improved after going gluten-free, it is a good idea to try eliminating dairy as well. Gluten and casein have a similar molecular structure. That's the connection because first they tested, they, they find out the autistic people, they have sensitivity for gluten. And after they find out the casein is part of their sensitivity and it can cause more problem in the good 
because the good react to the brain and they have in kind of like behavior uh, problem for the autistic people, it causes more. And that's why when they uh, stop consuming gluten, they can see changes, but not everybody had the, the, the good changes after when they stopped the gluten. They had to, they find out the casein could cause the problem in the uh, autistic uh, people. When we talk about uh, the dairy, we can, we are talking about the calcium, you know, how it's important when we have, we want to um, get our calcium intake. The search, research shows that cow's milk actually robs our bones of calcium. You take more calcium and you have more bone mass loss. In order to neutralize and flush out the acids, our bodies have to use the calcium that the milk contains, as well as some from our own stores. So every glass of milk we drink leaches calcium from our bones. That's why medical study after medical study has found that people who consume the most cow's milk have significantly higher fracture rates than those who drink little to no milk. It's a source for the people for ethical treatment of animals. And it's, a, it's a, just a screenshot from a video when I watched a um, few weeks ago. And it was, it's a video, it's only from dairies, about dairies, and uh, how the casein, how the whey, how the lactose, the lactase works in. And this US, um, the 1,400 milligram uh, calcium, they in, encourage the, in the US to take this amount of um, calcium. But when they consume this 1,400 milligram calcium, they can lose up to 4% of or her, his or her bone mass each year by consuming a high protein diet. In Africa, because they don't have dairy, they have the legumes, they have the lentils, they have rice, and all the plant-based, they consider that daily uh, calcium consume is 300 gram, and they con their body consume more from the 300, and no bone mass loss, till in, U in US, when they consume more calcium, they have more bone loss. At, uh, mass loss. It's, I heard about before because when I was studying with, uh, with the T. Colin Campbell nutrition study, uh, I heard about before, but I said, mm, let's, let's find out more. And it was one of the subjects how the calcium from the milk can uh, cause bone mass loss in every year when we consume it. And when we have the plant-based uh, diet, when we have the plant-based lifestyle, we consume enough and the, our body can more absorb. And that's why I think it's important to see what we eat and, and how it affects everything. And what are the benefits of the plant-based lifestyle? Because we heard about like what we should avoid or reduce when we eat. And the plant-based lifestyle is as you see, it's a lifestyle, it's not a diet. Because when we have a diet, we say it, we keep it for a while, but when we have a lifestyle, we create something where we feel in good, we want to leave that because every morning we feel energetic. When we go to sleep, we are not that tired because of we have digestion problem or we have we are anxiety. It's, we have the whole balance in our, in our body, it's just, it's a good feeling. And when we talk about the lifestyle, uh, plant-based lifestyle, now here we can see, now from now, I, we, I will talk about like, what's the benefit of the lifestyle, uh, the plant-based lifestyle. The boots in your immune system, reduce inflammation, maintain a healthy weight, increase fiber, and lower your cancer risk. Just a few, the many. And when we talk about, for example, the reduce the inflammation, well, because of the casein, because of the, the antibiotics in the meat, because of the hormones, they are all creating inflammation in our body. And when we start to reuse it, and after when we avoid these uh, food groups, you can feel the changes. On the YouTube, you can find a video like 
what's the the effects on your body when you eat a plant uh, plant based diet like the first two days and after the first week and after one month and after two months you can see the difference when you start to consume plant based more plant based and after plant based how it change your body your cells how it can uh, rebuild the cells how it can make um your body you know stronger and can reduce the inflammation of the body and uh, boost your immune system it supports your in immune system because the plants have essential nutrients that you cannot get from other fruits we need these nutrients you know all the vitamins all the minerals but you can find it in the in the meat the plants give you give your body what it needs to have fight of infection it means when we abuse the immune system, our body is, is okay to fight. Its body is prepared to fight with the infection. That's why we have to keep it strong and um, just give more the vitamins and minerals what can keep your balance. The plant-based diet strengthens your immune system to protect you against germs and micro microorganisms. Plant food reduce inflammation. Plants' essential nutri nutrients work to resolve inflammation in your body. Prolonged inflammation can damage your body cells and tissue and has been linked to cancer and other inflammation diseases like arthritis. We, need, we have to live our life without inflammation. I live with inflammation and it's just a nightmare. I'm sure many of us had a certain inflammation in our body like joint pain or any any we had the pain or we had for example even a, in a ear when we have inflammation in our ear or our sinus it's it's just a pain for for you know to leave and that's how we can keep our body to fight with the inflammation and the plant-based diet may protect you because it removes some of the triggers to these disease the plant-based diet helps maintain the healthy weight Excess weight causes inflammation and hormonal imbalance. And if you eat mostly plants, you remove many of the food that lead to vein gait. Our colons, um, we have toxins in our body. When we, when we make a cleansing, when we cleanse our body, they say um, the average of the age, like the middle age and the normal weight, we still can have two or three kilogram waste in your colons when you have your cleanse when you have a, a you know the ginger turmeric cayenne pepper when you have this and you are eating only for example raw foods for a while raw vegetables to cleanse or everything in the colon and in your stomach everything you can lose weight because the toxins in in our in our colons is still there and when you have this and you eat plant-based simply you are cleaning you know your body cleaning uh, you know what you eat you are just a spring cleaning or or when you eat something you know it just just the plant base is a good you know effect or what what you can do for your body and the plant-based diets have also been shown to reduce risk of both gastrointestinal cancer and colorectal cancer in adults. And more recent research has indicated the healthy green diet can also help slow the decline of cognitive function in Alzheimer patients. And now they are searching more for the dementia, how they link it to the, what we eat, for example, or what we drink, the water, you know, because we need the water to clean keep, you know, um, hydrated our brain cells, our whole body. Because when we drink less, we don't drink enough water. It's very important, you know, the water. You know, we start to get uh, tired, sleepy. Our skin start to change because we need the hydration in the skin as well. And even on our face, when we are dehydrated, you can see your skin is darker, and and uh, you, your skin is, is is like tired you have a tired skin and that's why it's important uh, plants foods are higher in fiber a uh, feeling for longer weight control uh, low cholesterol stabilized bl blood sugar levels and bowel management and when we talk about plant-based um, food 
I, th I'm sh I think I should mention about the collagen, you know, what it needs for our skin, our, our skin, bones, and um, you don't have to take the collagen powders or capsules because you have these amazing food. And I'm sure everybody loves blueberries or, you know, the, the seeds or the kale, garlic, one of the best uh, anti-inflammatory and, and the kiwi. You can eat, if you eat just two of uh, them daily, you can have your natural collagen and you, have to, you can forget about this collagen powder. The collagen powder, the one side is good, but the other side is it's highly processed because what they use, and many times they make it from whey, they use it, it's highly processed and it's not good for the ki uh, kidney. Uh, the processed powders like the protein powder and other like collagen, collagen powders, there is a video from D. Colin Campbell, why these kind of uh, powders damaging the kidneys. It, it's uh, just a few minutes, but it's, it's to watch it. And now we can see what's happening if we eat that way. For example, I was on the left side, not all, but I was this lifestyle before I had had issues. And you can see what can cause like less nutrition, empty calories, less fiber. We, we feel, you know, our, uh, we feel like we digesting is not working. We are tired and uh, uh, we, even we are craving for more these kind of food because our blood glucose is going up and down. And uh, um, the other, when, when you see the other side, it's like more, 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 more nutrition, more fiber, more life more microbiome diversity, more healthy bacteria, more health and vitality and stable mood and emotion. What we eat, it's completely affecting on us. I had experience just a few days ago, I was on a birthday party and there was few food. It wasn't that bad, but I didn't eat it for at least a year. And I just ate few pieces and I said, mm, maybe I shouldn't. And after my stomach and even I felt my, my body and my skin. It wasn't daily product. It was just something that I didn't eat like a year and how it affects. And it took three days for my body to, to process. And after I could feel I can be the, like I was a few days ago because it took my body a time to process it again, because it just how it changed. That's why it's the same when you start to change, when you change to uh, plant-based, how it changes in few days. It's completely different. And when we talk about um, like food, it's eating junk food is so common that eating healthy is labeled as dieting. When we start something, they, we say it like, okay, I start this diet or I want to do this diet or I try this diet because I want to lose weight. I try this diet because I want to be energetic or I try this diet because I want to run the marathon. I want more protein. But when we talk about like food is if we have those food, the groups, what is beneficial for us, we don't have to label it like dieting. We have a lifestyle. And I would like another introduce another gentleman. He's called Caldwell Esselstyn. He's um, he's working with the cardiology, and he said like some people think plant based diet, whole foods diet is extreme. Half a million people a year will have their chest opened up and vein taken from their leg and sewn onto their coronary artery. Some people would call that extreme. We have these issues with our artery, and that's how they can save our life. It's, we feel like we can give up our lifestyle, what made us sick. But certain things, when we are there, we have a surgery, or when we have health issues, there is no other chance. We, we have to change it. Or we live there, but we have surgeries and medication the rest of our life. And why not to spend that money for like the plant-based lifestyle, then spend it for surgery and medication. And I would like to introduce her wife, his wife and her, his daughter. His wife is 87 years old and he is 89 years old and they are plant uh, eaters. And 
as you see them, they are energetic, and, and she's a, their daughter, energetic and happy. They have cooking classes, they have cooking workshops, they have cooking ca uh, camps. And um, when, when I saw them, you know, what they do, for example, his wife is dragging the tire, it's uh, connected to his, her body, or waist, and he's walking and the tire is behind her on a rope, and he is 70, 87 years old. It's never late to start. It's never late to start a new lifestyle because, you know, we want to live longer in this earth and we want to live a happy life. And that's why it's the best to do, to start something what is beneficial for us. I would like to introduce you their cookbook. I have it here. I, I ordered it uh, when I saw them. I have it here. And the recipes, you know, it's not like you think like, oh, how to start or what to do or how to start a, a plant-based lifestyle. It's just your user Im imagination, find recipes. And you can find that all the, the, the fresh ingredients, the, the fruits and vegetables, the herbs, it can be a delicious, um, you can make delicious meals and how you can change your life with this. I would like to show you how the whole food plant-based eating lifestyle changes people. The, these gentlemen are same, the same person. Now he has a show, it's called um, how to lose weight, like uh, he's a interview room because he's interviewing uh, people like doctors and other specialists about the plant-based and he wants to help others because how it changed his life. He's a completely different person. You even recognize him if I don't know, he's, it is the same person. And this one, I just covered her face because it was in a, a closed uh, group and um, he was, he had multiple sclerosis. He was in a wheelchair for eight years, more than eight years. Frozen? And, oh, no, she's back. Sorry? And um, he was on a raw food uh, plant-based diet for eight months. He, he has, uh, she has grandchildren. She couldn't play with them because she was in a wheelchair. She couldn't move her legs. She couldn't move her arms. She had this eight months raw vegan diet and now she's out of the wheelchair and she's enjoying her life, gardening, walking and playing with the grandkids. Because no inflammation in the body, because all the inflammation, for example, the multiplicerosis or the rheumatoid arthritis, it's an inflammation what our food uh, created in our body or caused what we ate. When we change it, and there is a, a new life for her. It's, it, was a, it was a blessing. And um, when we talk about like the food, what we eat, all the vegetables, the fruits, and that's the, the pyramid for, for the whole food plant-based. And you can see the amounts, uh, how much you eat like daily in the size of the, the serving size. And the fruits and the vegetables is the basic and after the grains, Many people say the grains, it's not the best, but it's important because I was thinking like eat less whole grains because it's more calorie. But when you eat the grains with the vegetables, when you make your legumes, there is no, the calorie, for example, the fat can, your body stores. You have the grains you have the, all the vitamins and minerals and your body can uh, absorb, can use all the benefits of the plant-based, what can, can be another you know, uh, kind of life when you feel the benefit, when you feel all the, all the refreshing, you know, what you have because you don't have the pain, you don't have tiredness, you don't feel, you know, you are not you, don't, you're not, you don't feel, you know, the comfortable that like you feel in a good mood, you are energetic. And look at here, when you see it, like you can eat anything and you don't have to think about calories. You don't have to count the calories. You don't have to count the, the carbs, how much you have to eat. Because when you have a balanced diet, your body can consume everything, can use 
and just build in your body. It's amazing how God created and how God knew how to feed our body to live the life what he, he created us. And many people asking, what's the difference, the whole food plant based and the vegan? Many people said like, I went vegan, but I gained weight. And they said, no, this vegan lifestyle is not for me because I'm gaining weight. I didn't gain that much weight but I, when I had my other lifestyle before. The difference is the plant-based and the vegan. Can you see the right side, the vegan? It's all the vegan processed food. It means it's packed with fat, uh, saturated fat, sugar, and lots of salt. Uh, you can, I mean, you can eat if you want, but it's very important, you know, how to control what we eat. If you have your, for example, vegan cheese twice a week, that, that's okay. That's no problem. But many people started to eat like vegan sausages, vegan burgers, vegan, vegan, everything, vegan, vegan, vegan. But they didn't see that how much saturated fat they consume, how much um, salt, how much sugar in it. Because all the vegan food are very delicious. They are nice, but it's, when we check the, the saturated fat, sometimes it's more saturated fat because they are using oil, more oil to make it flavory, make it tasty. On the left side, it, everything what you see, for example, all the vegetables down, you can make any like delicious dishes, meals, you know, for, for your family. And that's your medication, that's your pharmacy. And that's why is important you know when we consume our food how we boost our body how do we boost our immune system and here are your uh, breakfast ideas it's very important to find your food what you for example you eat now but you think it's not healthy to make it the healthier version and you don't have to give up your favorite food and you can see the the, um, the options here for the breakfast and I'm sure you know you make like pancakes or, or uh, oats or granola. I, I had a cooking class on Sunday in church and I made uh, for them um, homemade granola without oil or any fat. And it was very simple. And you can make the overnight oats or, or the porridge or anything like whole green bread with uh, peanut butter and banana or you can make your uh, own jam. It's my favorite. You just buy frozen fruits and start to um, uh, cook it in a pot. And then it starts to get thick. When it's all cooked, you have your jam because of the, um, the pectin in the fruits makes it it's a kind of jelly and you have your own jam and you don't have to buy. And you can make your berries. You can make your strawberry, raspberry, mixed berry, uh, peaches, mango, anything. You have to just cook it, cook it, cook it. And after when it, the, the sugar in the fruit, you feel it caramelized, you have your jam. And you are not eating. You are eating only the, the sugar from the fruits. And the other is the main meals. I like this one because I always make options. Like if you make brown rice, you make um, quinoa. You, you cook both, and after you make a, a salsa, you make a bean stew or a lentil stew, and you have it two options. You can eat four days, a two different meal, just rotating them. And you have your dinner and your lunch, and you eat something, and you have always, I have always uh, hummus in the fridge. I have uh, vegetables, and when I'm hungry, and before I start with the whole fridge, I just grab the vegetables, eat the hummus, and while I'm cooking, I'm not hungry. I start to eat something or I just drink a small smoothie or something to eat before my overeating starts. I know myself, I have to eat something because my, if I go hunger, I can't stop my hunger. I have to eat something before I have my meal and that's how I can control my hunger because of my um, insulin resistance I had, but it, that's how I can control. And, um, it's all habits die hard. I know that because I have my habits, you know, how I grew up and I had my, my food and I had all my meals. I wanted to eat everything. 
But it was hard to give up at the beginning. But when I saw the benefit of this lifestyle, now I can't eat it because I don't want anything to my body. What I build up, you know, it just, I feel the benefit of it. And um, the closing for, uh, I have two slides for the closing. T. Colin Campbell, the China study, it's his book. It's the good health is about being able to fully enjoy the time we do have. It is about being as functional as possible throughout our entire lives and avoiding crippling painful and lengthy battles with disease. These are many better ways to die and to live. And the other one is, it's never too late to start eating well. A good diet can reverse many of those conditions as well. In short, change the way you eat and you can transform your health for, for the better.